Corn School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Bernard Tobin here on the Corn School, joined by James Dick from Omafra Engineer. Hey, thanks for taking the time. Thanks a lot, Bernard. Awesome. Hey, um, corn harvest is almost done. Um, some people still struggling out there, but almost done. Um, I want to talk a little bit about storage and drying. Talk about this year. We had low test weight, high moisture corn. What challenges does that create for, for drying and storage? You're absolutely right, Bernard. We saw a lot of much higher moisture than we would like to see. High 20s, 30% even, uh, and low test weight. And those that two combinations, uh, it creates a challenge even just to get that crop off the field in a timely fashion and then make sure that you're getting a quality harvest uh, when you're all done. Right. Now you just completed a little survey, a study of, uh, of, of storage and handling at uh, Dietrich Farm. You're really interested in, in damage. Tell us about what you learned. So we were looking at that study at Dietrich Farms at what was happening coming out of the combine. Um, we were really interested in how can we see what's going on with that sample. We know that when you get a graded sample, they do the screenings, you get the fines out of it, um, and that's what you're graded on in terms of your dockage. But what you may not realize is there's a lot more damage that happens more than that. The kernels that are larger, um, partially crushed, but still big enough to pass through the screenings, or the kernels that have hairline cracks on them, you don't find those in that dockage assessment. And what we found in this study is that you can have total damage, including fines and cracks, um, 20, 30 percent even, is coming straight out of the combine. Uh, that's not to. That's even before you do anything with drying or storage. So that can create a big problem. Right now, I want to talk a little bit later about you know how to manage it in storage. But hey, the first point here is on the combine. How do you manage your combine settings? You know. Um, to get that corn in the best shape going to the dryer. Absolutely. I mean, the harvest is mostly done at this point. Mm -hmm. So if you have anything out there still, listen close. But number one is make sure your machine is in tip top shape. Mm -hmm. Get those, uh, that concave and all those uh, harvesting um, pieces to that machine in good working order so they can do their best job possible trying to thresh that grain. And then watch your rotor speed, watch your concave settings. Uh, make sure they're tuned properly, get your dealer's help. I know the number one job is get those kernels off that cob, but try and do so you know, to minimize the amount of grinding and, and extra threshing that that machine is gonna have to do. Right, now we're heading to the dryer. Um, I think the word you use is, is patience um, and taking your time and, and managing that plenum temperature as well. Absolutely. Uh, you watch what's coming in into your dryer and watch what's going out. What we found actually is that you can have fine levels and breakage levels increase by two to three times. Mm -hmm. So you've got 2% fines going into your dryer, you could have 5 or 6% coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, 20, 30% total breakage, you could have 40, 50% total breakage coming out. Uh, that's a big change in, in one place. The reason for that is temperature. You watch, uh, if you're drying that really hot, you've got the grain coming in, uh, it's partially damaged, gets heated up, starts to swell a little bit, but it's compromised. So now it's suddenly the kernel that was cracked is now broken and the kernel that was broken is now disintegrated into fines. And that's what's creating that. So the trick here is watch your plenum temperature. If you can lower that down at all, do that. And it actually creates a benefit for you. I know it takes a little bit longer, you're compromising your throughput, but if you do it properly, um, your test weight is actually gonna increase as you dry. As you evaporate that water, what's left behind is the grain mass itself and that's a little more dense and the slower you can dry that grain actually the bigger benefit you get so uh, you watch your plenum temperature if you're seeing that test weight increase lower your temperature a little bit more maybe in stages of 10 degrees fahrenheit until you see that test weight really stabilize then you know you're at a good uh, a good drying temperature sometimes you can even turn grade three corn into grade two corn just by drying it a little more slowly now we're in storage um how do we want how do we manage this? I mean, like, we, potentially we've got some cracks. Um, it's, it's all about managing movement, right? Absolutely. I, the, the first thing, though, is once you get it in that storage, you know there's fines, and you know there's some fines in it, and they're going to collect in the center of your bin. That's just how gravity works. So get the center of that bin, core it out. Take a load or two out, depending how big your bin is. Uh, watch until you've got probably a cone down at the top, maybe a third to a quarter of the diameter of your bin and you know you've got the bulk of the fines out at that point. 
You can either feed that stuff if you have livestock, you can clean it and sell it, uh, but just don't keep it in the bin or that's going to create issues for aeration and spoilage down the road. And the final message really is once it's in the bin, once you've cored it, just don't move it. Move it as little, I mean if you need to move it from here to there, that's fine, but just the more you move it, the more breakage you're going to wind up with. You can get a half a percent breakage on every elevation. So you move it a few times, that's a pretty significant increase in the amount of damage in your crop. You, you just want to leave it there. I mean, aerate it, that's another discussion, but keep it in good condition, uh, but move it as little as possible just to prevent that mechanical damage. Then you know you're going to have a better quality product when you finally ship it out at the end of the season. Well, James, hey, thanks for taking the time. Uh, first time on Real Agriculture, going to have you back again. Uh, I'm sure we'll have a different story to talk about next year. I'm sure. Thanks a lot, Bernard.